I've been very humbled recently. I had a bit of a wake-up call. In particular, it was in that discussion that I was having on Tiny Chat. You know, where I rage quit and then came back. Well, I, I didn't just rage quit. I wished him harm and then rage quit. And then when I came back, I said that I understand why so many people on the left become violent towards people with those types of viewpoints. And then I calmed down and apologized. Apparently he's used to that from people, and he finds it entertaining. I mean, the problem is that people like him are very, very likely to vote for things that hurt people like me, that hurt the LGBT community. And it's really hard to separate that from who the person is. In some cases, you can't separate them. Yes, it makes us angry, us as in LGBT people, because we see the spread of that kind of mindset as a grave threat to our existence, to our ability to be able to participate in the American dream. Yet we're supposed to be so saddened when we see in the census that there's a decrease in white people. And we should feel saddened and, and feel sorry for people when we hear and read that religions that have historically been rather oppressive to LGBT are having fewer and fewer adherents as time goes on. Yes, I, sh I should be just so sad, so sad. No. And that doesn't translate to me hating religious people. I'm, I don't care for most Abrahamic religions, but that doesn't mean that I hate the people who follow them. Unless they show hate towards me. And, well, you know, then it's fair. But, you know, as far as white people decreasing, yeah, yeah, we're, we're supposed to view the decrease in a, in a certain group, in a population, as the same thing as being bullied, harassed, or even being killed. It's the same bullshit arguments you see from people who spew the concepts from Bob's mantra. That a decrease in white people in population changes is white genocide. Yeah, it's horse shit. Absolute rubbish. And apparently, unless I treat straight white Christian males as an oppressed group, as a marginalized group, you know, because they're being criticized, then... And I guess I'm in the wrong. So it's hard. But we're simply not going to change the deeply held beliefs of 30 to 40 percent of this country. People have lived the lives they live. They have the beliefs they have. They're going to raise their families with the same beliefs that they have. And LGBT people are going to have to continue to fight to keep our rights. We don't do this by being violent or threatening violence towards people whom we find as a threat to our existence. We don't do this by giving elementary school children LGBT diversity training in public schools and then gloating that there's nothing that anyone can do about it. Those things only hurt us, honestly. We can meet our goals at the voting booth. We do this by showing that we really care about society and everyone in it. By showing that we really do value love over hate. We can't just say a bunch of mottos, slogans, and catchphrases and then put them on our cars as bumper stickers. We can't just tap or click like or heart or retweet and it suddenly makes our virtue signaling true. We have to prove it with our actions. We're not doing a very good job at that right now. And I can understand why many on the right view us as the baddies. I don't think we're the baddies, but I understand why a side views us as such. It's not because of our sexuality or gender, though I'm sure that doesn't help in their eyes, but it's because of the activist methodology that we've been using. Look, it takes a lot to love somebody who hates you for who you are. Now, to a lot of people, their beliefs are who they are. Granted, beliefs can change. They're not like someone's sexuality or race. Although there are, have been some people who try to say that sexuality can be changed. It's kind of a stretch, but maybe there are some occurrences of it. I don't know. 
I mean, like on a conscious level. I mean, I suppose people's sexualities can change over time, not by anything conscious, but uh, it's not like someone can just get some piece of information and suddenly their sexuality is different, right? But beliefs can change like that, you know? You can get a piece of information, that, something that you just can't deny, and something that you used to believe, you no longer believe. So, beliefs can really, really change. But for the time being, the beliefs that someone has right now, that represents who they are right now. We certainly don't have to accept them doing things that hurt us. No. But if they're not doing things that hurt us, shaming them for having their beliefs is not going to achieve anything. It's not going to make them change their beliefs. It's just going to spread hate. All we can do is stop them from trying to hurt us, explain to the public why those things hurt us, and try to get laws passed that forbid workplace and housing discrimination based on, you know, someone being LGBT. You know, do that across the country because there still are a number of states where people can discriminate fully all they want and, there's, and people can't really do anything about it. You know, push for that sort of thing. I mean, we're already seeing a lot more representation of LGBT in our entertainment all, all around. So, you know, there are those types of progress that we're making. Though, in some areas, it seems like we're being overrepresented, you know. I think GLAAD is trying to push for 20% representation. I'm like, um, no, there's, we're, we, we don't have that much representation in real life. It, it, we, we, we don't have that much of a percentage of the population. So, you know, um, that's kind of a silly goal. But, uh, but we don't want to see the mindset of people who hate us for simply being who we are. We don't want to see that mindset spread. But we can't use the law to stop that from spreading. We can't use shaming tactics to stop it. I mean, we can try, but it's not going to do anything. And, and no matter how afraid we make them of stating their views, they're still going to have their views. And it's not going to stop them from spreading their views. We have to prove that our way is better. We have to prove that we're actually more tolerant, more caring, more loving, more accepting more understanding, more empathetic. If we can't do that without force, then are we the loving, caring, understanding people that we say we are? And this is what I have been ultimately asking myself since that discussion on Tiny Chat. Society is changing, but not at a pace that, you know, we'll see some sort of LGBT utopia in even a few of my lifetimes. But things are changing, and if we play our cards right, um, you know, we can have a, a decent pace of change in our direction. No, I'm not going to do the Dave Rubin waltz, but I'm also not going to do the black block tango either, nor be some sort of keyboard warrior or camera warrior. Anyway, thanks for watching.